Hello students, welcome to the third session for 9th standard science dealing with the chapter that is chapter number 13, why do we fall ill? Well up till now we have discussed very well about the health, the diseases, the various types of the diseases, the infectious and the non-infectious agents and in the last class we have discussed very well about the major disease that is the AIDS, its symptoms and the various types of the other diseases. Now today our main focus of attention is on the principles of the treatment and the prevention. That is how to take care when a person is having the diseases. As well as we shall focus in much detail on the vaccination. So let us understand in much detail of it. Well what are the steps taken by your family when you fall sick? Have you ever thought why you sometimes feel better if you sleep for some time? When does the treatment involve the medicines? So there are two different ways of treating the infectious diseases. One is by reducing the effects of the disease also called the symptom based treatment and the other is to eliminate the cause of the disease. So one would be reduce the symptoms that is the symptoms based diseases. So for the first we can provide the treatment that will reduce the symptoms. These symptoms are usually because of the inflammation. As for example, we can take the medicines that bring down the fever, reduce the pain or the loose motions. We can take bed rest so that we can conserve our energy. This will enable us to have more of it available to focus on the healing. But this kind of symptom based treatment by itself will not make the infection microbe go away and the disease will not be cured itself. Well, focusing on the, the principles of the treatment, there are numerous microbes, the viruses, bacteria, fungi and the protozoa. Each of these groups of the organisms will have some essential biochemical life processes which is peculiar to that particular group and not shared with the other members of the group. And these processes may be the pathways for the synthesis of the new substances or the respiration. These pathways will not be used by us either. As for example, the antibodies are the effectives to kill the infectious. Well, our cells may make new substances by the mechanism different from that used by the bacteria. So we need to find a drug that blocks the bacterial synthesis pathway without affecting our own. This is what is achieved by the antibiotics that we are all familiar with. So here the bacterial has a cell wall. So in order to kill the bacteria, the bacterial cell wall is, a, is mainly dissolved and the bacteria gets killed. Well, there are antiviral drugs that kill the viruses also. But one reason why making the antiviral medicines is harder than making the antibacterial medicines is that viruses have a few biochemical mechanisms of their own. They enter our cells and use our own machinery for their life processes. This means that there are relatively very few virus specific targets to aim at. And despite of this limitations, there are now effective antiviral drugs. As for example, the drugs that keep the HIV infection under the control. So because of this reason, the antibiotics for the viruses are difficult to have it. Exactly in case of the protozoa, well the drugs that kill the protozoa directly enters the body. Well in doing so, there are a lot of problems. The body functions gets damaged and may never recover completely. The treatment may take time. The infected person serves as a source of transmission. So that person is taken to an isolated place. Moreover, the principle of the disease is better than the cure. So the person is to be taken care of. Furthermore, it takes a lot of time in case of the cure of the disease. So it is better that if the, if the patient is kept at a particular place far more away from 
their relatives so that it does not easily spread and the infected person may serve as a source of infection also so if the patient is there at a particular place where a lot of overcrowding is there then yes definitely the transmission might easily take place and the prevention of the disease is better than the cure if the cure is not taking place then it is better to do some sort of the prevention so focusing on the principles of the prevention so there are various ways of preventing the diseases the airborne microbes can be prevented by providing the living conditions which are not crowded so here there are various ways with which the principles are been made that is the safe drinking water so boiled water should be used or nowadays we all have the ro facility at our home by which we can get good drinking water there are vectors that spread the diseases so nowadays the governments have established the e toilets so a lot of toilet facilities are there that helps us in preventing the diseases so the public hygiene is a basic step that prevents the infectious diseases or the spread of the infectious diseases well the role of the immune system has a huge impact on the life of an individual the boosting the increase in the immune system here we can observe that in a particular season some people are affected by the disease while the others are not so why they are not because the immune system of the individuals is far more stronger and the others are not having that much strong immune system so how to increase the immune system of an individual well a good balanced diet is one of the major things that a person should have so there are certain immune cells in the body which kills and destroys the foreign substances so this is because the immune system of our body is normally fighting off the microbes we have the cells that specialize in killing the infecting microbes and these are said to be the immune cells these cells go into action each time the infecting microbes enter the body and if they are successful we do not actually come down with any of the disease so the immune cells they manage to kill off the infection long before it assumes the major proportions and as we have noted earlier if the number of the infecting microbes is controlled the manifestation of the disease will be minor in other words becoming exposed to or infected with an infectious microbe does not necessarily mean the developing noticeable disease so one way of looking at the severe infectious disease is that it represents a lack of success of the immune system so if the person is having the disease then yes definitely the immune system has a huge role to play in that well a good balanced diet as we have discussed very well is the major way with which the immune system can be increased if the junk food is taken or the improper diet is taken as at an irregular time that also might decrease the immune system so the functioning of the immune system like any other system in our body will not be good if the proper and insufficient nourishment and the food is not available so there are certain cells in the body that is the immune system known as the memory cells which identify and recognize the organisms that might have been killed by these cells so therefore they are said to be the memory cells just as a child is small that child has taken the polio drops so the polio drops they increase and they encourage a lot of antibody cells they are said to be the memory cells so if at all the the polio virus enters the body that child will not be having the polio because the memory cells are already there and they have already killed the the polio virus that might have entered the cell or that might have entered the body during various years of his life so they are said to be the memory cells 
and these memory cells they have a huge role to play so the immune system cells one of the cells is the memory cells there are numerous other cells but one of the major cells is the memory cells the soldiers of the body so in order to do so one process is made that is said to be the immunization so what is this immunization so there are various ways one of the way is the injection of the a suitable agent that is injected into the body of an individual basically the dead viruses or the dead organisms are entered into the body of an individual just as to create just as to trigger the growth of the antibody cells so there's these antibody cells they grow they multiply and as a result of which they do their respective functions so basically the killed organisms the killed the dead viruses or the dead microorganisms are taken into account well going into the history the history of the smallpox well a huge problem was there when the smallpox came into existence so the smallpox epidemics were not at all uncommon in such an epidemic the people used to be afraid of the coming near someone suffering from this disease since they were afraid of catching the disease however there are one group of people who did not have this fear these people would provide the nursing care for the victims of the smallpox so this was a group of people who had smallpox earlier and survived it although it was a lot with a lot of the scaring others so people were afraid to do so so those who were caring they were also getting aff affected of this disease is also so having the disease once was a means of preventing the subsequent attack of the same disease so once if it is there then it it might not be taking place for the rest of the life but it can be easily spread up so there are special immune system responses in the body so the next time the particular microbe or its close relative enter the body the immune system responds with a greater vigor and this eliminates the infection even more quickly than the first time so during the next time when the microbes enter the body the cells are already present so the foreign organisms injected into the body they act as the suspensions or the vaccines so for the first time it will be difficult for the person as the antibodies are getting developed so the dead smallpox viruses are injected into the body of an individual just as to fool the immune system and to germinate or to make grow the antibodies so that they can grow and make it much effective in a functional way and edward jenner was the first one to do so he was given a lot of prizes for it so therefore he is said to be the father of immunology for his great contribution to do so and the same vaccination we are facing nowadays for the corona virus so the vaccination for the virus is a far more difficult than the bacteria and we have found out the vaccines for various disease like the polio the whooping cough and the tetanus also so that is the entire thing about this chapter that is chapter number 13 why do we fall ill where we have discussed about the health the diseases the various types of the diseases the various forms of the diseases their numerous symptoms the infectious and the non infectious agents we have dealt with the major disease that is the aids how it is getting transmitted 
from one person to the other as well as we have talked about the principles of the treatment and the prevention along with dealing with the vaccination also well in the next class we shall discuss in much detail with one more new and exciting chapter of the biology section for science 9 standard thank you very much